Hello everyone, life is full of unexpected problems and even the smallest things like going to a cafe and bringing something there can sometimes cause us problems. Yes, that's what happened in the case of Donaghue vs Stevenson. Mrs. Donaghue was a very poor woman. She was separated from her husband and she was struggling to lead a normal life. Life is unfair sometimes, isn't it? In the year 1928, 26th August, 8.50 pm, Donaghue went to a cafe in Scotland with her friend. The friend of Donaghue ordered a ginger beer and ice cream. For people who are not aware what a ginger beer is, it is not a beer, not an alcoholic beverage, but something produced from the extracts of ginger. The ginger beer and ice cream were served. The bottle of beer was poured into Donaghue's ice cream cup. Donaghue ate some ice cream. Then Donaghue's friend took the bottle and poured it into her tumbler and only then they discovered a snake in the ginger beer bottle. As Donaghue already ate some content from the bottle, she was shocked and also afterwards she was diagnosed with gastroenteritis. The facts are now established. Now Mrs. Donaghue is going to sue the person who has made her already worsened situation worse. But as I said, Donaghue was a very poor woman, so she approached a pro bono lawyer. The pro bono lawyer filed the case as a pauper so that she doesn't have to pay court fees. Donaghue is going to file the case against the bottle manufacturer Stevenson. As far now, the case seems to be very simple, but actually it isn't. The very first thing to note here is, Donaghue filed the suit, but the bottle was ordered by Donaghue's friend and not Donaghue. There shall exist a contract between Donaghue's friend and the bottle manufacturer, but why should it exist with Donaghue? Why should the manufacturer be held liable for negligence with whom he had no contract? In this case, the defendant side was very confident that they would win this case. Because at that time, the prevailing law was that a manufacturer owed no duty to a consumer with whom he had no contract. But still, the rule had two exceptions, where the product sold was dangerous or where the product sold was known to be dangerous to the manufacturer. But the Donaghue's case did not fall under any of these exceptions. As far now, we have seen the legal situation which prevailed during the case and the facts. Now, let's learn the judgment. There were five judges in this case and the case was decided in the ratio of 3 is to 2. Lord Atkins' decision in this case is the most important one. He said that Stevenson is liable. First of all, he said that these exceptions are not clear. The exception provides that a duty arises if a product is dangerous in itself. A pistol or a gun is dangerous in itself, but a ginger beer is not dangerous in itself. But as per Lord Atkin, a gun is dangerous and a poisonous ginger beer is dangerous as well. When it comes for a gun, at least we know that it is dangerous and we tend to be safe with gun. But with a poisonous ginger beer, we just assume that ginger beer is safe and when it tends to be toxic, it is more dangerous than a gun. As we all know that a wolf in sheep's clothing is more dangerous than an obvious wolf. Citing this judgment, he said that one man may owe a duty to another, sometimes even when there is no contract between them. Why should it be so? First of all, everyone including the manufacturer knows that some products will be used by persons other than the actual purchaser. For say, you buy some ointment and you keep it in your home. It will be used by your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, pretty much everyone in your home. On considering all these things, Lord Atkin found the new rule of neighbor principle. So, you are liable to your neighbor and you owe a duty to him even though if there is no contract. Then, who is a neighbor? A neighbor can be identified by the doctrine of reasonable foreseeability. Those individuals who could be reasonably foreseen to be affected by a person's actions are neighbors. Also, this case held that manufacturer owes a duty of care to all its possible consumers. So after this case, one had to just show breach of duty and legal injury in order to prove negligence and no need for a contract. These were the principles evolved in the case. Neighbor principles, duty to care and negligence without contract. I hope you have understood the case. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.